Hello, hello guys. My name is Anna. I'm a movement freedom master and professional Swiss coach from Georgia. And we'll continue to talk about the squat game and to talk about the main lines. I want to show you guys what is the main monster and how we can play and everything about it. Okay, so uh, first of all, let me guys show you again. The squat game is the open opening, which starts with the e45, 96, 96, uh, c6, and d4. And uh, about the other options, like if black knight takes and play other moves, um, you can guys check the previous video about the scotch game, and it covers those moves and those lines. And today we will talk about the main lines, like a bishop c5 and knight f6. Those are the main moves, and more here is a bishop c6. Um, so let's start to talk about the bishop c5, because it's the main move, it's the best move, and um, um, this is best for black. To also, like a little bit good for you guys to know what is the good against the squid game. Because uh, maybe you don't play squid game, but if you, as a black, if you play 45, uh, you get the squid game, right? Sometimes. So it would be also good to know how to play against it. So bishop c5 is a bad move, and here why you have the um, three main options. Let's say one is to take the knight. Uh, second is to just move the knight with the temple to attack the bishop, and there is also the line where the white can protect the knight. So, uh, guys, in the previous video, I literally talked about the knight c6 line and how good it can be if not queen f6. And even after queen f6, it's still okay to play. And you guys can um, mm, actually. Uh, watch that video and knight c6 is covered in the previous video so I will not talk about the knight c6 anymore because it's covered in the previous video and at this point uh, let's talk about the knight um, b3 and the uh, uh, knight b3 and the bishop b3 so after knight b3 for example um, black um, of course will retreat on the b6 because it's like a better diagonal it's better for bishop and um, here is the tricky thing about this position. So, uh, first, here's a small, um, uh, let, let's say, um, small um, um, problems if we play bishop c4. A lot of people play bishop c4 uh, because of the queen h4. And after queen h4, as you see, uh, the boss uh, pulls are hanging. And wait right here, have the two options to play castle. And, like, Leave this pawn because black can take it, right? Because a uh, king and a queen will be placed with the same line and it can be uh, bad for them. And the second option is to play queen e3 and protect them both, let's say. But after queen e4, queen e3, there's an interesting 95 move. And um, mm, the black will kind of uh, either can exchange the knight for that bishop or after castle, they can use the knight to attack. So it's kind of a little bit an um, unpleasant position for white. And also, it, it's like a, if white castles here, of course, black can't take some four because of the e1, and the queen and the king will be placed on the same line. Uh, and black plays just knight f6 to finish the development. And for example, if white just develops two, um, black will just castle. And here, here is the, uh, the small problem that um, white pieces are not kind of like a well placed. Like, this is like a, after knight e5, this bishop doesn't have a good spot to go, this is taken with the knight. This knight is also like a, mm. and black can also like a create some attack here, so it can be dangerous. So that's why bishop c4 is not a good option. And against um, a bishop b6, here is either a e4 move, here is either knight c3 move. And uh, here is either the, actually here is also interesting queen e2 move, which looks a little bit weird, but the idea for white is to do the queenside castle. So they do that, they do knight c3, then bishop g5 after knight double knight of course, and c6, and then castle queenside. So this is also interesting. So don't develop this bishop too early guys, and also in squash game, like I already said in the previous video, and you can guys again check it. Um, Bishop is quite good on d3 in mm, the Scotch, white bishop, and there's a lot of lines when it's better for us to place the bishop on d3 first, which protects the e4 pawn. The second, because opponent don't have an e5 pawn, we can technically open it at any time, any time, right? 
and um, it feels better here than here. <laughs> so this is what happens after knight uh, b3. Here's also the bishop is three move, which is interesting. And well, the idea is to just hit this and protect this. And for example, if black plays the queen f6 with the pressure here, white plays c3 to protect it. So white will just not move the knight. White will just protect the knight and keep it on the d4. So c3. Uh, and then both side continues to develop the pieces, for example d6, mm, white can develop bishop now either e2 or either um, c4 in this case. Oh, actually here, oh no, there's no, yeah, it's sort of okay, <laughs> I forgot something. <laughs> Here is also a small trap after bishop d3. White creates a trap for black. It looks like the knight is hanging, but it's not hanging, guys. It's not hanging. It looks like it's hanging and black will win the pawn. But they will not win the pawn. Because at the end, when you take with the queen, there is the discover check and black will the queen. So, keep in mind, it's not free. <laughs> Um, so bishop d3 is the move here, bishop c4 is the move here, bishop e2 is also the move here, and black is the wolf knight, e2, e7, taken, castle, castle, and, oops, 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 what, what, oops, and, um, f4, f4 is a pretty good move here, oh, well, how I delay this, don't want this, so f4 is the pretty useful move, it's like a, kind of, like, takes them, Five knight square, and also um, it prepares the bishop f3, which is good. But also keep in mind it weakens the desire, and also you guys should be careful about it. Um, so this is something like a, I think it's playable position from the boss perspective. And again, in this videos we will not deeply analyze the lines, and we will not go like too deep mm, with our uh, analysis. Um, but maybe. Uh, if you guys will be interested in once, you can just do the like kind of big video and analyze things deeper, and uh, that will be interesting too. So write it down below. <laughs> so um, mm, yeah, this is what happens after bishop c5, knight c6. I covered in the previous video. So if black plays the knight f6. And I have to, against knight f6, the best for white is to take here, because, do you remember guys, against bishop c5, after taking, only one problem was in, in between queen move, which was attacking the, and creating a checkmate side, and also, like, moving the queen, and then they're kind of taking the knight with the db, and it's not that for black, right? Mm, and at this point, after bishop c5, uh, that's why knight c6 could be really, really good, but it's not that good. Uh, against knight f6, this is already pretty good because there's no queen f6 anymore. And same thing if black takes with the d pawn, we exchange the queens, and it's a little bit better in the game at this point uh, because of the structure. And it's really pretty looks like a white almost have the extra pawn because they have good four versus three. So this is the great chance to create a pass pawn. Well, I'm not saying it's better for white. I'm not saying it's bad for black. It's it's near to equal. But if someone asked me to pick the color, I would definitely pick the white color, right? It's, it looks more pleasant for white to play this endgame than for black. Uh, that's, the, that's the thing. Uh, if they take with the B, oh, sorry, with the B pawn, uh, here white have um, two options. Play E5 and play Bishop D3. That's the best options. But after E5, there is a line with the Bishop E7. And probably you guys know this is like a pretty sharp line, like Queen E2, Knight E5. Uh, like opponent's queen was pinning our pawn, and we have to unpin ourselves, and then knight moves because now it's hanging. We are not pinned anymore. And c4 attacking to get rid of it. Bishop pins us. We protect it. There is some h4 ideas too. So it's like a, um, it's like a sharp line, but really interesting. Uh, if you guys want to. Avoid the sharpness of this. There is also bishop this remove. Oops. Um, bishop this remove. And something almost same will happen here too. Mm, but black now have either d6. You just cover this square or either d5. 
that's not very far. They still have the uh, Queen's Heaven. But here we have Castle. Does that remember? I remember correctly. King takes Rook, Knight e4. Take, take, Knight and Sister, Bishop f5. Do I remember it correctly? Queen h5. <laughs> um, there's castle, there's also queen 2, and there's also f4. Yeah, f4 is also move. Yeah. f4 is also move, guys. Uh, castle is also move. Um, bishop f4 is also move. The queen is also move. Yeah, like, yeah. But I like f4 more. I would, I, I play f4 here. And then, you know, you know the castle. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is again the, the knight f6. If a player plays queen f6, guys, against queen f6, um, here we can either just protect the knight and it will be transposed to that position, guys. If you remember when it starts with the bishop c5, bishop e3, queen f6, c3, it will be transposed to the exactly the same position that I already told you. In that line. Um, again, when black plays, see this, they cover and they attack and they cover. Same thing. Uh, or if you wa don't want to transpose to this, after queen f6, there is also the knight c6 move, which is interesting. And here's the thing it defends how. Uh, so uh, the small problem with this is again, guys, remember this position? They can transpose it to the best position. C5 line, that's for black line. So, um, let's just play, uh, I don't know, let's just play Bishop E3, makes sense. Let's protect it and just like play this with your radio. I think it's the good option. I think it's the good option. Okay, guys, if there is any suggestions, if there is, uh, oh, again, like, uh, those videos are not to, like, uh, I'll show you guys how to exactly play this. It's just about to learn a little bit more about the opening and to uh, talk about the possible lines. And if guys you will want to know those deeper, uh, you can analyze it and or you can we can also analyze it together. Like uh, first we will just talk about a little bit about those openings, but soon I promise I will also make the videos where we will like uh, talk about it more and analyze some games too. It's important to also analyze the games um, because even if you place the pieces, even if you know some opening moves, it's important to know how to continue after, right? And have to play your position and have to play your early middle game. So don't forget, not only learn the openings, also try to learn early middle game positions. So after opening, we will not get confused, we will know what to do, and we will know some major plans uh, from our opening. So we will also do some analyzing, analyzes, and we will analyze some games too, together. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And the next video will be the uh, switch gambit. And um, then we will move to the Rui Lopez. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day, all of you. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.